Good morning. And then let us look at the Luke chapter 12, verse 1 to 12. And then you are worthy. You are worth, worthy more than any sporos. And you can see Luke chapter 12, verse 1 to 12. Out of many thousands had gathered, so that they were trampling on one another. Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, saying, Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight, and what you have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roofs. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him whom, after your body has been killed, has authority to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Mm. I tell you, whoever publicly acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. Yeah. But whoever disowns me before others will be disowned before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But anyone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When you are brought before synagogues, rulers and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance. Yes, praise God. Let us listen to the word of the Lord. Luke chapter 12, verse 1 to 12. Every morning I continue preaching from the book of Matthew, and now is until the book of Luke now. And then I think I was preaching uh, from from book of Matthew last year, I think November. But I continue to keep on preaching, and now is uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 1 to 12. And then uh, this is a scripture, actually, if you look at uh, Luke chapter 12, verse uh, 1, Jesus said, Be on your guard against the east of the parishes, which is uh, prop, uh, hypocrisy. You know, parishes, they are the not proper Christian. They are the uh, hypocrisy. They are, look like good, but not nearly good. They are religious people. They are an obstacle uh, for the kingdom of God. They are against the uh, Lord Jesus Christ. And, and they never know the, who is Almighty God. That is why Jesus say, be careful this yeast of parishes. You know, yeast this means a spread. And be careful this, uh, you know, like the, uh, this is religious people. And then they, there is nothing concealed that uh, will not be disclosed. Why hidden that will not be made known? What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight, and what you have whispered in the ear in the inner room will be proclaimed from the loops. What does it mean? He knows everything. There's no more secret things anymore. There's no more you know, hidden things. And if somebody come to you, please don't tell anybody, only you, I speak to you. Just be careful. <laughs> There's no, no secret. If actually somebody talk to me, oh, only for you. Okay, okay, don't tell me, only for me. And <laughs> of course, I, I'm, a, I'm a minister in the church. I counseling for a congregation. I know some people, I kept the, the secret things. And then, you know, when you speak anything in the dark or secret things, Everybody will know, sooner or later. But uh, already Jesus knew. And verse 4, I tell you, my friend, do not be afraid of those you who kill and the body, kill the body. After that, you can do no more. Don't be afraid of who killing you. Uh, of course, like gangsters and um, dangerous people to come and uh, we need to be scaring if they try to kill you. But don't be scaring what Jesus say. Yeah, don't be afraid, those who kill the body. 
after that, I can do no more. If somebody kill you, what should I do? Nothing they can do. Look at the verse 5. It's very important. Luke chapter 12, verse 5. But, but I will show you whom you should fear. You have to fear this kind of people. But not people, actually, is Almighty God. Do you know what Jesus said? Fear him. Which means fear God. Fear God. Fear God. Who, whom you fear God, who after killing the body has a power to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Fear God. Who has got authority for your soul to put into the hell and heaven? Almighty God. Yeah. Fear God. Fear God. You don't need to fear anybody, but only fear God. Um, fear God. Fear God. If you fear God, you don't fear nothing. You fear nothing. Fear God. Fear God. Only fear God. He has got the power and authority for your soul. Yeah? Through your soul into hell or heaven. Therefore, fear God. Yeah? Do you know then? Your soul belongs to God, and therefore you have to fear God. Unfortunately, in these days, people, they don't fear God. There is why people, their life is a struggle. Fear God. If you fear God, and if you fear God and follow Jesus and worshiping God, one day you'll be with Jesus forever and ever. And then verse 6 and 7, Jesus changed the topic about the sparrows. Are uh, not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Do you know sparrows is a very small bird? Yeah. <laughs> sparrows is a very small bird. And uh, this sparrow is, is uh, not forgotten by God. Yeah. Yeah. Look at verse 7. Luke chapter 12, verse 7. Indeed, the very hairs of your hair head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Yeah. You see, even your number of hairs, God knows. I don't know how many number of hairs I have, but God knows your number of hairs. He knows your everything. He knows your destiny. He knows your thought. He knows everything. Even God never forget even uh, sparrows. This sparrow is God remember. This small bird. And then Jesus say again, remember, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Look at the look at the Matthew chapter ten. Matthew chapter ten verse twenty nine. Matthew chapter 10, 10, verse 29. Actually, this is again, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? In Luke, five sparrows. But this is in the book of Matthew chapter two, chapter 10, verse 29, two. Yeah, sparrows for, sold for two penny. Yeah? Uh, so, sorry, uh, two sparrows are sold for one penny, actually. Yet none of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. What does it mean? Yeah? Without the permission of God, even this uh, little bird not died. Do you understand what Jesus said? Yeah. You are more precious than any other animals. You are more precious than any other things. Therefore, don't be afraid. People say, oh, people died by uh, coronavirus. You know, some of our members uh, died. I don't say that some of our members died by coronavirus. Some of our members died and they be with the Lord Jesus in the time of the law. Yes. Do you understand? Not people die by sparrows. And uh, not people die by the coronavirus like a sparrow died uh, by something. No. Without the permission of God, people not died. Mm. Yeah? Therefore, your life is more precious than any other things. Is what the Lord Jesus say. Be careful. You know, don't say, oh, people die by coronavirus. I understand what you mean. But uh, remember, in the time of the law, people died. 
Remember your life is more precious, more worth than any other things. Your soul is so precious. So precious. Think about your children. Your children are so precious before you, yeah? But how about you? You are more precious than any other things in the eyes of the Lord. So precious. So precious soul. Remember, you are more precious than animals, anybody, and not only you and God. You need to remember when you stand in front of the Almighty God, you know, between you and your, your father in relationship. You, know, you cannot say that my mother is a good Christian and then your mother is uh, standing in behalf of you in the eyes of the Lord. No, your mother is your mother. Your father is your father. You, yourself, you come before God. And then um, Jesus continues to speak about, uh, was, uh, about the Holy Spirit. I tell you, whoever acknowledges me before me, sorry, before man, the Son of Man will also acknowledge him before the angels of God. And I acknowledge Jesus. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgive, forgiven. But anyone who blasphemies against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. It's very interesting. If you're against Jesus, you'll be forgiven. But if you're against the Holy Spirit, you will not be forgiven. What's different? What's different? Actually, another scripture say, you know, you know, Paris is saying, oh, Jesus is cast out the demons by the... Jesus is not, you know, demons. That is why Jesus speaks about these things. Yeah. When we are brought before synagogues, rulers, authorities, do not worry about how to will defend yourself or what you will say. You know, who will help you? Verse 12, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you uh, should say. You know, in any situation, you need to rely on the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will say to you what to say. Holy Spirit, in any situation. Please remember that your soul is more precious. Your soul, you are worthy, worth more than many sparrows, what Jesus said. You are so precious in the eyes of the Lord. Therefore, uh, you have to look after your life, uh, your body, your soul, your heart, preciously. Yeah? You have to remember who you are. You are a child of God. When you, become your, when you become a child of God, you have to live like a child of God. Don't live like you know, a child of demons anymore. You are a child of God. And then the, let, the, let the Holy Spirit rule your heart, your life. And then let the, uh, John chapter 1, verse 12 say, in the book of John chapter 1, verse 12, Yet to all who received him, though those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. You become a child of God. We are a child of God. How? Because we receive Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. When you become a child of God, live like the light of the world and salt of the world. Lord Jesus, take control of your life. And you are so precious. You are so worth than any other things in this world. Remember who you are. And then, you know, you are also a precious man. When the precious man moving, you know, you can see there's some precious things, beautiful things happening. <coughs> Did you know that? And then when the royal family moving, like a Queen Elizabeth, and moving in somewhere in Scotland or, you know, Wales, wherever, you know, BBC or all the cameramen go and then take a picture and then they're recording what they're doing. I'm telling you, you are more precious than Queen Elizabeth. You are more precious than any other people in this world. Why? Because you are a child of God. Do you understand? Remember your position. Your position is a child of God. You are sons and daughters of God. You are so precious. Without the permission, you, know, you cannot die in this world. Yes. You are so precious. You are so precious. 
in the eyes of the law. Therefore, uh, when you live in this world, uh, live like a child of God. Live like a child of God. It's so important. And then God changed my life. I was a child of demons a long time ago. And, uh, you know, I thought this, you know, the owner of my life is myself. Who rule my life is myself all the times. But when I gave my life to Jesus, who rule my life, who owns my life? Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. My lifestyle transformed. I used to smoke, heavy smoke, or heavy drunk. Or I was a terrible man. But uh, I was a child of uh, darkness in once. But he changed my life. Now I become a child of God. When I become a child of God, thanks be to God. Remember, we are children of God. Yeah, remember, we are children of God. Therefore, since I become a born in Christian, I live like a child of God. I live like uh, 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 so precious in my life. So precious. Your life is so precious in the eyes of the Lord. God recording everything what you're doing. Of course, if you committed sins, you made a mistake, you need to repent your sins. And He will forgive all your sins. Uh, I don't know, over 15 years, 16 years ago, God gave a desire to fasting for, for this nation, United Kingdom. 21 days. 21 days fasting for this country. I drank only water, no food at all. I was praying and praying for this nation. I was praying for, you know, prime minister and politician and all the churches and the lawyer family. I prayed for all these things in UK with fasting, 21 days. I lose the um, 13 kilos when I was fasting for 21 days. And after 21 days I finished the fasting, I, I ate the soup for 21 days. <laughs> You know, when you eat the 21 days of soup, it's very boring, actually. Anyway, I finished the fasting for this nation. Nobody knows what I did. You know, Queen Elizabeth never, never know what I did. I was fasting secretly for this nation. Lord Jesus, can you bring the revival in the United Kingdom? I was fasting and fasting and praying and praying for the United Kingdom. I love to see the great revival. I don't know. Can I encourage you? Can you fasting 21 days for your country? Pray for your country. United Kingdom, England, you know, China, uh, Ghana, Kenya, <laughs> you know, uh, every country where you came from. We can pray for your country with a fasting and prayer. For what? For revival. I didn't pray for myself at the time when I fasting. I pray for the nations, United Kingdom, with the 21 days fasting. When I finished the fasting, and sometime later, I went to the Korea for uh, some pictures of my family. And then I returned to England. At the time, I had uh, the uh, you know, student visa. Uh, I was studying for master's degree. You know, master's degree in UK is only one year. And uh, my school letter is a one-year school letter. Uh, at the time, we can show the school letter in the airport, and then you can get a visa. If you have the one-year school letter, they can give one-year visa. I was in Heathrow Airport, and then when I, I met a queue, and then when I came to the immigration officer, and I showed the letter, and then actually the lady, lady saw the, the, my letter, okay, one year, and she, if she give me one year, it's, it's, it's okay, no problem. But she looked like uh, testing me. Do you know what she said to me? How many years do you want? If she give me, according to the letter, one year is a praise God. But she looked like testing me. How many years do you want to get the visa? And I just uh, think about it. Within one second, I say, just give me three years. When I say to her, just give me three years. Do you know what she did? Yes, sir. She said, yes, sir, and they changed the day, and she gave me a step, three years a step. <laughs> Do you understand? I gave her only one year letter, but she gave me three years visa. I was amazed. And then at the same time, Holy Spirit spoke to me, remember who you are. Who is the highest position in the United Kingdom? God spoke to me, who is the, who is the number one in UK? 
Who is number one in UK? God. God the Father. Somebody says, who is the number one in UK? Somebody say the Prime Minister or Royal Family member, Queen of no, no. God. Who is the number two in UK? God. <laughs> God is number one. <laughs> number two is me. God spoke to you. You are a child of God. Number two is you are you. You are number two. Therefore, maybe number three is a prime minister or one, you know, we don't know. But number one is Almighty God. Number two is me because I'm a son of God. Therefore, whatever you say something, they say, yes, sir. They, they obey. They submit. And they gave me the three years visa. I was fasting and praying for the United Kingdom uh, 21 days. And then God answered me. And then when I say something, these people in UK, these authorities, they submitted to me. They gave me three years visa. You see that this, uh, can you see that this, uh, uh, the, the spiritual order? Yeah. Number one, Almighty God in UK. Yeah. Number two, you and me, if you are born again. Number three, who are the one? Angels. Angels to come to this world to serve you, serve the born again Christian. What is number four? Number four is uh, Satan. Satan. All the Satan demons, yeah, under the, under the angels. What is number five? Number five, I tell you, number five, no born again, non Christian, who are never believed in Jesus, is number five. If you give your life to Jesus, I used to, number five. I used to, uh, I used to be a, a child of demons, but my position from number five to number two. Can you imagine? After God, thanks be to God, God changed my life. And when you can become a, a child of God today through Christ Jesus, therefore you are so precious. Can you imagine? You are so precious in the eyes of the Lord. So precious. You are worth. Than any other animals and you know, sparrows and any other things. Only God and you. You are a second. Therefore, continually serving Jesus uh, with a humble heart and follow Jesus. And then please remember you are number two. Hallelujah. Amen. God is number one. I can share the one more testimony and finish. I met one Chinese guy in front of Brixton Station. Brixton is quite a dangerous area in the United Kingdom. When I met this uh, Chinese guy, and he thought I'm a Chinese man. Actually, I'm a Korean man. Korea, Korea and Chinese totally different language. He came to me with a Chinese leaflet. He's an old man, I know, over 80 years old. Very old man, he came to me. He's speaking Chinese. Ni hao ma? And I said, I don't understand the Chinese. But he tried to give me the Chinese replay. I said, I'm okay, I, I'm a Christian, I'm born again. He said, oh, he, he understood English not uh, much, but he did really understand. And then, because I'm a minister in the church, he is an evangelist, a Chinese evangelist. I say to him, what is your name? Do you know what he said? This old man say, my name is number two. <laughs> I never heard somebody's name is number two. And then, okay, I say to him, why your num name is number two? And do you know what he say? Jesus is number one. I'm number two. <laughs> Can you imagine somebody's name is number two? I realize that he always put Jesus first in his life. I, I thank God. I never met him again. He said to me, my name is number two. And actually, God spoke to me, yes, you are number two. Jesus is number one in your life. Jesus is a, uh, lives in my life as number one. He lives as, a, uh, as my Lord and my Savior. He lives in the center <coughs> of my heart. Can I encourage you? You are number two. <laughs> you are number two. Jesus is number one in your life. Hallelujah. If Jesus is number one in your life, your life is transformed. Your life is so uh, beautiful. You are holy. Yeah? You are a saint. Yeah? You, are, you are a wonderful man of God and woman of God. And Jesus lives in your life as number one. Which means you no longer live, but Christ lives in you. Jesus is number one in my life. I'm number two. How about you? Yeah? Therefore, my life is so precious. So precious. 
so precious. He rules my life. Do you know where is heaven? Heaven is not somewhere over there. No, heaven is inside of me. Mm. Why? He lives inside of me as a number one. Amen. I'm number two. You are a number two. Can I encourage you? Your name is number two. Number two. Yeah, Brother John and Brother Lamia and then Dina, all you guys, Dina, number two. I'm number two. You are my family. God is your father in heaven. Same father. Your father is my father. One day we'll see each other in heaven, face to face. In these days you see it by Facebook. Dina book is not not near Facebook by online. In this day, people they preaching into the online, but one day we'll see each other. But even in this world, I believe the coronavirus will disappear very, very soon. But after Korabah is gone, we'll go back to normal life. No, I don't agree. We will go forward. You will catch the fire of God. We will go for revival. Do you understand? Many people say, even children, I wish we'll go back to all the life or normal life. Please forget about that. Go forward. Yeah, go forward. Catch the revival fire. Your life is normal, normal life. You are extraordinary life. You are number two. God bless you. Have a wonderful day, my dear brothers, sisters. Your name is number two. Hallelujah. Yes, Natasha, uh, Liliana, uh, number two. God bless you. Father, I pray for my dear brothers, sisters. You are so precious. You are so worthy than any other things in this world. God is number one in our life. Jesus is number one. Holy Spirit is number one in our life. When number one say to us, you are number two, we always listen to our Savior, number one. We are number two. We can listen, what God say to us, we will follow Jesus. Heaven is inside our heart, not somewhere. Heaven is within us. The Heavenly Father, we enjoy the peace of God. We enjoy the heaven. And because it's precious news, we share and for others. The Heavenly Father, would you bless your children and continually and give them your grace and your mercy. They enjoy the, uh, their life as your number two. Jesus, you are always number one in our life. We love you. We praise your name. One day we stand in front of Almighty God. And God will say to us, well done, good and faithful servant. Mm. Father, continue to cleanse our heart, our mind, our body by your precious blood of Lord Jesus. Because of coronavirus, people, they wash their hand, But we cleanse, wash our heart by your precious blood of Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give all the glory and honor and power. We praise your name. You know that how much we love you. We love you with all our heart, our mind, our strength. And we love our neighbor as ourselves. We pray your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day today. Be blessed. You are number two. Number two. Jesus is number one. Be blessed. Bye.